Lord, I'm in love with you. In you I live, in you I breathe. There is no me without you. Precious Lord, I can't stop loving you. Jesus, 
there is no longer the gene of the the worldly gene in your in your, in your vein. And because there's no longer the worldly gene in your body, you are not expected to be ungodly. So when we see you as a child of God who has proclaimed Christ, and we see you living a life of ungodliness, then we are surprised. We can be shocked. We can we can we can we can question you. We can we can talk to you. We can be concerned about you because we feel that this is no longer your gene. It's a mistake for you to live a life of ungodliness. Even though we are living in the world of ungodliness, you are no longer a part of this world. You are just existing in this world to make impact in the world, to bring the ungodly people into the godly life. You belong to a kingdom of godliness. Any form of ungodliness that is different that, you can, that cannot be traceable to the gene of God is a mistake on your part. Is somebody hearing me with this right? I want you to listen to me with rapt attention and be ready for a change. One way or the other, as children of God, perhaps we have lived a life in the past or even in the present that is not of God, that's not, that is ungodly. Because it's easy to live that life. I, I looked at it. You born a child and the child begins to grow. It is natural for the child to just lie. It's just the child that you that was born. It's natural the child will just start lying. I said, you be what you went to see, learn this thing from. It is because it is in the gene of the world to lie. So it will not be difficult to lie. It will be very easy to lie. Now the same way I want to tell us tonight that it is possible to live a life of godliness. If the gene that is truly really running through your vein is the gene of God, you cannot have the gene of God in your vein and be living ungodly. If you have the gene of God running through you, it is obvious that it will be very easy for you to live the life of godliness. Hallelujah. Godliness has virtues. It grants you access to revelation. <coughs> Godliness grants you access to revelation. The reason why Christians that carry God so much on their head, they are perfect in the things of God, yet they cannot have access to the revelation that God has for them is because of impurity. Hallelujah. It is natural for the world to sin. If the world sins, somebody who is born in the sin, nobody is surprised about it. Throw a person. When you are in the world, if you sin, who cares? <laughs> That's your nature. Amen. But people care when you fall into sin, when it is not your nature. You care for yourself. Even yourself, your, 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 your conscience will be, will be breaking you when you do wrong. Two of us. If you are born again and you are genuinely born again, even without nobody talking to you, when you do evil or when you do wrong, naturally speaking, your conscience will begin to talk to you. I don't know if I have a witness in this. Your conscience will be talking to you. It's everybody. Everybody. At one time or another, you still see yourself, finding yourself living a certain life of ungodliness. Life is ungodly. Nothing is, is, you can't tell me that somebody who envy or somebody who lie is the same thing. It's not, I mean, it's not the same thing. It's the same thing with somebody who fornicate. The only difference the Bible said is that somebody who fornicate and somebody who commit adultery has committed that to his own body. That's what makes it different. But sin is sin. And the Bible says sin is a reproach. He said righteousness I saw. said, but sin is a reproach. Now there are a lot of emphasis on fornication and adultery. But what all what of all that ungodly act? What of all that ungodly act? What of all that ungodly acts? Hallelujah. I, I, I want us to look at the scripture. I didn't plan to preach like this. 
I only plan to come to the church this evening and preach. Just about two hours ago, God just spoke to me and said to me, Son, I want you to go and talk to your people. Let them be able to overcome ungodly acts. Just two hours ago. So, I mean, I was planning to come here and teach you how you can have your breakthrough because messages are breakthrough. I want to start preaching on breakthrough so that you can begin to exercise yourself into next year for the breakthrough that is coming your way. Because I see unusual breakthrough in this place. Amen. Exploding in the life of all the new kingdomites in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you have never traveled out of the country before. Next year, 2015, you start traveling out of this country. Amen. So certain things that you have not done in your life before, next year, they will begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you are going to break records in your family next year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Let's read it together. Joshua 3 5. He said, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now there was a prophecy by Prophet Joshua that the Lord is about to perform wonders tomorrow in the life of God's people. But Joshua knew that the more even though God has spoken about wonders and God cannot lie, he's a covenant keeping God and he's a God that can never lie because he's a holy God. He said, but you need to do something. You need to sanctify yourself. Otherwise, the wonders will come, but you will not partake of it. Why? Because of your cleanliness. He said, therefore, I have seen your uncleanliness, but you need to do something in order to be able to assess this prophecy that I have given to you, that God will do wonders. He will only do wonders, but except you sanctify yourself. Is somebody going with me? If you don't sanctify yourself, these wonders will come, but you won't be a partaker of it. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. That's why you see a lot of prophecies come to you. You see a lot of things that have been spoken of you. And a lot of good, good things that have been spoken of you. And it looks like it's not coming to pass. And then you begin to question yourself. You begin to question God. You begin to question the person that God uses. I see the person has spoken wrongly. But something that you are doing is not permitting God to release what he has spoken concerning you. He said, sanctify thyself so that you can receive the wonders that God is bringing to you tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with those who look for peace from the outside. Hello? Is that scripture saying follow peace with only those who are peaceful to you? No. Is that scripture telling you to follow peace with only Christians? No. Is that scripture tell, telling you to follow peace with those who are helping you? No. Is that scripture talking about follow peace with those who are really, really ready to give you something? No, sir. He said, follow peace with all men, unrighteous men, righteous men, sanctified men, unsanctified men. Follow peace with them, circumcised men, uncircumcised men. Follow peace with all of them. He said, and holiness, I will follow peace with all men. Make sure that you are holy. Make sure that what? You are holy. With that which no man shall see the Lord. With that which no man shall see the Lord. With that which no man shall see the Lord. With that which no man shall see the Lord. So if you have billion on earth, you are not permitted to see the Lord except you are holy. The only credential to see the Lord is holiness. 
You may have all the money in this world. You may have all the gifts in this world. You may have all the blessings in this world. But if you are not holy, you cannot see the Lord. You cannot see the Lord. You cannot see the Lord. It's the scripture and the scripture cannot be broken. He said, with that which no man shall see the Lord. When, when, when God spoke to me two hours ago, and I began to look at the scriptures to, to dish out something that God is trying to tell me. Because before God tells you to preach something, if God expressly asks you to preach something, there is a purpose for which God asks you to preach it because we serve a God of purpose. Are you hearing what I'm talking about in the church? And then what I try to do is to hear God. What are you saying? And God will begin to put scriptures in my spirit. And I began to look at the scriptures. And as I began to look at the scriptures, God himself, the Holy Ghost, will begin to speak to me. So I am the first person that the, 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 the hammer of the word of God will first come up before come here. It's not a chance play. I, I don't just choose to come and preach any message because I want to preach it. I, I preach because my commander has asked me to preach it. And before he has to preach it, the hammer of that word has come up first. Is somebody in this place. Follow peace with all men. With that which no man shall see the Lord. We still see people call themselves Christians. They are born again and they will be fighting. You wonder. There was a story about one man that was he's a pastor. And then he was in the filling station. He wanted to buy fuel. And then because of issue that has to do with change or no change, he began to call it. He was almost fighting. And suddenly, somebody drove into the filling station. Lo and behold, he was their church member. He quickly <coughs> uh, behaved as if all is well. The person said, what happened? What are you trying to do to my pastor? Because that one has already said he was, he was ashamed of himself. Are you what you are in the church at your home? When nobody can see you, are you the same person that we know about? If somebody talks to us about you, that this is what you are doing in the secret place, we, are, we going to, are we going to put hand on your head and say you are a good boy? Or we're going to say, oh, why did you do this? Are you ungodly in the church? Are you ungodly in your secret place? And you are godly in the house of God? Is your, does your attitude portray God? Does your attitude portray that you have that you carry the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Yeah. There is no sin in God. Because Jesus carried the gene of God. God Specifically, and express they wanted to show the people of the world that, that you can actually live holy. So he sent Jesus Christ to the world to come and show us how it is possible for someone who is a full man to live in holiness. So Jesus came to this world and he said in the book in the Bible, he said, and the prince of this world came to me, they found nothing in me. How? He was a full man, my brother. If Jesus can live in the midst of sinners. If Jesus even a person came to rub his leg and yet he was not moved. If Jesus can be able to pass through this world and he live a holy life, it is possible for us to live a holy life. I, I talked about it sometimes ago, some sometimes ago, that is it possible to really live, live this holy life? You will need the Holy Ghost to do it. There is something that is making it difficult. Because a, a bed will always be easy, will find it very easy to fly. People will not find it difficult to fly. It's very easy to fly. Even though they will be wondering how is this thing flying? But if you fly, it's difficult for you to fly because you are not eagle. It's very easy for a fish to swim. Why? Because it's a fish. So when you put fish in the midst of water, it will it will, it will swim very easily. So if you are born of God, then you should be godly. That means that you have the capacity to find it easy to be godly. Be sorry, may I you God? What I'm telling you now is not something that I'm saying talking to anybody else. God is talking to every one of us. It's somebody we may have. Nobody is an exception. You can watch yourself, look at yourself, look at the areas for which you need to adjust. And begin to ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, help me to adjust in this area. Holy Ghost, help me to adjust in this area. I am a practical preacher. Don't know how to deceive myself when it comes to coming to preach on the pulpit. I preach wrong. 
as this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have somebody beside you. Tell the person, please, God will give you grace to live a holy life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Follow peace with all men. We are used to when men are doing good to us, we'll be good to them. But when the man in question or the men in question begin to have issues with doing the, what you expect of them, you begin to have attitude. It is a sin before God. For your peace with all men. But somebody is giving you money before he doesn't give you the money again, or he will not meet up with the money he's giving to you, it's beginning to be, you're beginning to have an attitude. For your peace with all men. Somebody always compliments you. You are beautiful, you are fine, you are good, you are handsome. But at a particular time, he doesn't feel like telling you you are good or you are fine. Eh? You begin to have an attitude. The Bible says, follow peace with all men. Whether they do right to you or they do wrong to you, follow peace with what? Amen. How many men? Amen. And that's why the Bible says that I've never seen the righteous begging bread. If you are truly righteous, there's no way that you can be that. God is not an author of confusion. God will never say what that will not come to pass. If God says that the righteous will not bear bread, then the righteous will not bear bread. bread. If God says in the book of Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, He said, Blessed are the one and the pure in heart. Then that means blessed are the poor in heart. And blessings of the Lord is what make it rich. Blessing is greater than wealth. Because blessings command wealth. Hallelujah. It is what God shows you that makes you to be a show to your world. Are you hearing me? It's what God showed to you that showed you up to the world. Is somebody who may have. It is what God showed to you that will make you to become a show to the world. That's why the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse, verse 13 or there about. It said, You are the city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. You are the city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. In other words, God is saying to you that as my son, as my daughter, you are a city that is set upon the hill. I'm going to show you forth to the entire world. But how can you be shown forth to the entire world? Except by revelation. And with that holiness, the revelation will be short sighted. Your revelation will be short sighted. Your revelation will be short sighted. And that's why in, 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 in the holy days, you know, you discover that any time that the enemy wants to defeat you, a particular camp, they make sure that they make the camp to sin. So that when they can camp sin, they will be defeated, they will become weak. And when they are weak, they will be defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody must buy this thing and you must go and listen to it. Again and again. Even me, I'm going to get it. Because it's a fresh message. The only way you can be a show to your world is for God to show you something. What is God showing you? Have you seen anything from God? Have you really seen any revelation from God? The reason is because of your impurities. If somebody will be here, the reason is because of your what? Your impurities. It is impossible for God to behold iniquity. Let them that call the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Let them that call upon the name of the Lord depart from what? From iniquity. Your sight determines your height. One thing that cut off your sight very quickly and sharply is sin. You know, we are living in a world whereby now people deceive themselves too much. When you go to a prophet and you tell the prophet you want to see clearly the way the prophet is saying, the prophet will not tell you about holiness. Most of them now, today, two of us, will tell you just go and so see. Just go and so see you, you seem like me, it's a lie. The number one foundational requirement for you to be able to gain 
revelation from God is, is holiness, 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 righteousness, holiness, godliness. That's the number one prerequisite. It's not no prayer. Number one foundational prerequisite for revelation from God is purity. The devil can do everything, but there's one thing that the devil cannot do. The devil is not pure. He can never be poor, pure. The devil can never be pure. So the only thing that can make you different from the devil is if you are pure. The Bible says that even the liars, the devil is their father. Two of us is in your Bible. So even the liars, the devil is their father. I don't think any one of you wants the devil to be your father. So now somebody tell the person is called lying. It's, it's one of the easiest things to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. Let's read it together. I want to teach. That's what I'm trying to do. So that this thing will sink in your brain. Just as I'm trying to make it sink in my own brain too. God is speaking to every one of us. Is somebody happy with me here tonight? Yes, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. He will show them His covenant. The secret of the Lord. So, if you want to partake of the secret, and it's the secret that makes you a wonder to your generation. Without the secret, you cannot be a wonder because you must know something that others don't know that will make you outstanding in life. So the secret is only with them that fear God, that live in purity. God does not share his secret with mere men. That's why the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says the secret things belong unto God. He said, but those things that have been healed belong unto men and their children. Until the secret is revealed, you can't have it. And it is the revealed secret that makes you a one dollar to your generation. And he said he will show them your his covenant. That means that God only keeps covenant when you are truly his child, when you fear him, when you notice that you actually fear him, and his gene is what is running through your vein. I hear what I'm talking about. He begins to share his secret with you. God is high up there. The only thing that can take you high up is for you to have the secret. If you don't have the secret of God, you cannot be high up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, as a man, the secret of God for you to walk, to walk, to walk, it's not difficult. Then it should not be difficult for you to be God. God began to show me so many things. He said, if it is not difficult for a bird to fly, if it is not difficult for fishes to swim, if it is not difficult for men to walk, it is still not difficult for my children to live in purity. I have discovered that we have draw friends in our mind thinking that purity, you must be an extraordinary human being to be able to live pure and to live holy. It is not true. All you just need is to submit your gene to the genealogy of Christ and you will discover that you will find it very easy it will become certainly difficult for you to be committed. Amen. Amen. Is somebody in this house? Yes, sir. Are you following me at all? Yes, Let me show you another scripture. John chapter 29, verse 3. When it's time to shine the upon my head, and when by his light I walked through what? When it's come to shine upon my head, and when by his light I walk through darkness. Without the light of God, you cannot walk through darkness. We are living in a world of darkness. We are living in a world where there is not just darkness, deep darkness. Now it says deep darkness. David was speaking in the book of Psalm 23. He said, even though I walk through the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because he feared God. The light of God is the only guarantee for you to walk through the darkness of this world. And that was what said too. The Bible says, and Job was a righteous man. 
In fact, God posted concerning Job before Satan. I said, I said, it's because you are blessed him so much. That's why he's having you in purity. He said, let us strike him and see whether he will be able to still stand, stand right before you. God said, go on, but don't take his life because if God gives him opportunity to take the life of Job, he would have taken the life of Job. You know, the funny part of it is that the devil can't even his wife. He took everything. He can't only his, himself and his wife. Why did he keep his wife? I asked this question from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost told me because he wanted to use the wife against him. That was the only option that he would have been able to use to achieve his aim. The devil will look for every means to achieve his aim for you to fall. And look, and you heard what I'm talking about. The devil wants to use any means for you to fall so that you can be weak spiritually. And when you are weak spiritually, they are able to defy you like a fish that a man wants to eat as a person. Is someone with me? Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible says, Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth will make you fail. Amen. How can we overcome godliness? Quickly, that's the most important thing. We all know that somehow, somehow, one way or the other, we live a life of godliness. The Bible says, if you say that you are not a sinner, you don't fall into sin. He said, to the truth is not in you. He said, the truth is not in you. But something shocked me in the book of Proverbs. I can't remember, maybe Proverbs 23 now. The Bible says something there. He said, he said, if you do not confess and forsake your sin, he said, thou shalt not prosper. In other words, if you will not come before God and tell God, Lord, have mercy on me. I always say to God, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. Whether I remember one or I don't remember. I just say, Lord, have mercy on me. The, it is in the kind of the Pentecostal today that we don't even pray a prayer of uh, repentance and a prayer of forgiveness of sin because we think that we are holy. Hello? We are not conscious of that fact. We know of you know, the orthodox, they always ask when they come to confess all the time and they still go back to their sin because they live in sin actually. But because we are too conscious of the fact that we are holy, it is not a bad thing to be conscious of righteousness, to be conscious of holiness, and to be conscious of the fact that it is because of the righteousness of Christ that we are righteous. But at the same time, it is important that sometimes you come before God and tell God, Lord, have mercy on me, whether you remember what you have done wrong or not. I assure you, if, the, if God will open your eyes to see, you will know that in one day there are not so many wrongs. Maybe the way you have spoken, maybe it's something that you thought in your heart, maybe something you even say that you think is your right, but you are actually wrong before God. If somebody will be here, so many ways by which you offend God. How do we overcome? All these things. How do we overcome ungodliness? Number one, new path. Number one, new path. New path simply means receiving Christ. When you receive Christ into your life, you have become a born again Christian. You are being invented. You are not being invented or biologically by your I mean, biological father, or you don't have to go back into your mother's room to be back to be better again, just like the Codemos asked Jesus. Is somebody with me here? Yeah. But what that scripture is talking about is that as soon as you give your life to Christ in deep, in truth, and in spirit, something has regenerated in your life, and that makes you, you know what I mean, guarantees you of new back. I hear what I'm talking about. And so new birth is the guarantee for living the life of godliness. Because new birth will infuse into your blood the genealogy of Christ. Hello? New birth will infuse into your life the genealogy of what? Of Christ. And that is a gene of godliness. Is somebody who may John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. Let's read it together. 
as many as you see him. To them he gave the, to them gave the power to become the sons of God. So as you have received him, he gives you the ability, the strength to become what? To become the son of God. To them that believe on his name. So as you receive him the truth and the spirit, you become a carrier of his gene. You become an heavenly citizen. You become his sons and his daughters. As long as you believe on his name. If somebody will be here. So that's what we call him back. And without this, you cannot live on it. It is impossible. You just be a moralist. There's a difference from being a holy person and being a moralist. There are two different things. Is somebody here? There are two different things. That you are a moralist does not make you holy. Hello? And you see, the life of a moralist is worse. It's worse than the life of, 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 of a sinner. Why? Because a moralist will tell you, if you preach Jesus to him, he will tell you, Everything that you don't do, you that you say you have Jesus. Now, those are the things I don't do too. In fact, you myself, I guarantee you, I still do it myself. That is not God. Me, all the things that some things you are doing, I don't even do them. So, which what you want to preach to me? That's the lifestyle of a moralist. That somebody is a moralist does not make him a holy person. Amen. Amen. What makes you holy is that you have received him. You have received him. So when you are in, you have received him, you re become a partaker of his gene. And as you become a partaker of his gene, you carry the capacity and the power to begin to live a holy life. Am I communicating to somebody? So if your birth, your new birth is not genuine, this more this evening, please let's make it right. Because we don't even know when Christ will come. I don't know why God asked me to preach this message tonight. I am one man that just listen to whatever the Holy Ghost said to me. Don't let it might just be too late. Tonight, just come before him on his altar. He knows you inside out. Whether you confess or not, he knows you. He knows me. He knows everybody. He knows to the extent of the intent of our heart. He knows everything. Number two. What do I do to overcome ungodliness? After new birth, you need to engage in what we call continuous fellowship. You need to engage in continuous fellowship. You need to engage in continuous fellowship. You need to engage in continuous fellowship. Fellowship with the Father, fellowship with the Son, fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Sweet Spirit, I love you. Sweet Spirit, I just thank you. One of the things that makes some of us to see or to have revelation is all because we fellowship with the Holy Ghost. When you just fellowship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus has spoken. He said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost to comfort you and to teach you and to guide you into all truth. So, if I began to enter into the realm of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, naturally the things that I do not know, the Holy Ghost will begin to teach me. It begins to open my ears. It begins to open my eyes. It begins to open my mouth to say the right thing, to guide me into all truth. So, fellowship makes it happen. And with the more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you look like Him. The Holy Spirit is a personality, it's not to be known. Two of us, a husband and a wife that is living together, watch out. After 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they begin to look alike. When they both go to somewhere, they will, if you say this, my sister, they will agree. Because they are looking alike. Not just that they are looking alike physically, they are equally looking alike in me, alike even in character. They know the woman will be somewhere, they will ask the woman a particular question. That if your husband were asked this question, what will he say? The wife will say exactly what the man will say. Because they have grown up to fellowship with each other and they have got to a level where they understand themselves so much that they know what they can, the man can do or what the woman can do by time. They know themselves inside out. 
The same way when you fellowship with the Holy Ghost, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and the more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you look like Him. The more you begin, you can be able to fathom the things in the secret places. The more you, be able to, you can be able to pick revelation. The more you can be able to pick divine signals. The more you will be looking like Him. It will be very easy for you to counsel somebody. Because you just want the right thing to tell the person. What the Holy Spirit will naturally tell the person is the same thing that you will tell the person. I discover that when any time I increase my fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it's very easy for me to pick the mind signal. And at that particular period, if anybody comes to me, I pick whatever that says in the name of the Spirit of Salvation. Let it put it. Very clear. So the, the time that I'm becoming a little bit cold, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, I still realize that I don't pick divine signal as much as when I am very close to the Holy Spirit. It's, I'm teaching you some practical lessons here. Is somebody with me here? Ten. April chapter 3, verse 13. But exhort one another daily. Why it is called, give it to me. Uh, exhort one another daily, why it is called today. Lest any of you be acting the truth in deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. Hallelujah. Continue fellowship with, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, continue fellowship with the Father and the Son. And as you do that, you will find it very easy to live the life. Of the Holy Spirit to live the life of the Son. If the Son will live on earth in his earthly ministry, and he said that the prince of this world has come to me, but they have found nothing in me, the capacity with which he uses that makes him to be able to see sin, live in the midst of sin, and yet he will not sin, he was still holy, the same capacity will come upon you. And it will become very easy for you to do. The soul will be here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Number three. How do I overcome ungodliness? I'm talking about how do you overcome doing things that is not right? Doing evil, wickedness, evil thoughts, evil manifestation. How do we overcome it? Number three, engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Engage what? The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Say, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. You can achieve these things. You can achieve godliness. You can attain godliness. You can attain holiness. You can attain righteousness with your own capacity. You can only attain it by the help of the Holy Ghost. So you need to engage the help of the Holy Ghost in order to be able to live holy. You need to engage yourself. You need to engage yourself. You need to engage yourself. I have no fellowship with him. Well, you need to demand for help in order to live like him. If somebody will be there, you need to do it. It's a warfare. It doesn't just work. You must be ready for it. It's a warfare because the devil will do all he can to make sure that you don't live a holy life. He will give you all kinds of apparatus not to be able to live it. But you need to make up your mind and engage the help of the Holy Spirit in order to be able to live holy life. Listen to me. It, it's much more enjoyable. Sin is a temporal pleasure. It's much more enjoyable to actually fall into sin. Everybody, everybody, no matter who you are, as long as you're a human being, you love to sin. It's not natural. It's not going to be But if you begin to make up your mind and begin to engage the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will take over. Tell the Holy Spirit take over my life. I don't like this thing I'm doing anymore. I just want you to help me. I know I can't help myself. 
is somebody who they are. What did I say, number one? Number, number two? I get the fellowship with what? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Number three? I get the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number four? What do I do? I'm teaching you write these things down because I want you to go and practice it and come out of any form of bondage that the enemy is putting you into. I break you free from any demonic potential yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number four, put off ungodly acts. Have somebody tell you, I said, put off ungodly acts. No, 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 you will say something to be here. I said, tap somebody properly and tell the person, put off of God they had. If the person didn't respond very well, tap the person very well and talk to you, put off of God they had. God they had. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. But now he also put off all these. Now also put off all what? Oh. All these. What are these? Number one, anger. Write it down. Number two, rot. Number three, malice. Number four, blasphemy. Number five, filthy communication out of your mouth. You may not fornicate, you may not commit adultery. All this from that, are you not there? Don't you get angry over little things? Don't you, don't you, don't you get unnecessarily malicious over some issues? Don't you blaspheme? Don't you communicate evil things, filthy things, the things that ought not to come out of your mouth, things that ought not to be heard in the, in the mouth of a believer. Don't you say them? Filthy communication out of your mouth. But now you also, let's read it together. I want to see, I'm looking at everybody's mouth. Let's read it together. But now he also put off all this anger, rot, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your Locate your own. Get angry very easily. Locate your own. Get angry. God wants us to bring anger to the level, to zero level. But the Bible says that anger is in the bosom of the fool. You get angry and you allow anger to control you. Not just that you got angry. Now the spirit of anger begins to control you. That means you are not a believer. When you get to a level where the spirit of anger is what is controlling you, then you are in corner. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anger. Malice. You give malice over you to think. Small thing somebody did to you, you are, you are giving it to yourself. Give it to yourself. It's, it's a sin before God. May Jesus not meet you in that kind of life. Okay. These things are very important. These things are very important. They are very important. Who is that place? We think of how to abolish that kind of place. Don't mind that man of God. Every time you call like this, you see sick. You just call it sick. Every now and then, he doesn't know anything when I see. What is your business? Are you the one who called him? Are you the one who sent him? If you don't have sick to give, they don't let them force you. They call your name, say, by fire, by force, you must drop seed. In the cost seed, if you are not ready to drop seed, even if you are, you are not ready. Nobody forces you. So why can't you maintain yourself? And I just want to give the seed, let them keep so that they can be blessed. Stop, stop, stop communicating wrongly. Evil communication corrupts. Many, many evil communication has made some people to even leave our church. It happens in all churches, but because our church is still young, some people communicate because of people they are they are still babies in the Lord. Their mind cannot contain certain things. 
when they just hear something about themselves, they just say, hey, ah, this is the right they will be using to look at me in that church now before you know it. The person has disappeared. Yeah. You just go see the person, and you call the person, the person cannot tell you the truth. The truth is, the person has heard somebody talk about him or her somewhere about something, and now she cannot cope. She sees herself as a, as a filthy garment that any time she comes to the church, everybody see her or see him with that eyes. Meanwhile, not maybe now, it's only one or two persons that have heard about it, but the mind cannot continue because he's still a baby in the Lord. Be careful of what you say as a child of God. Be careful of talking about people. Help people to grow in the Lord. Help people to grow in grace. Don't help them to fall. Even the Bible says that if you are doing something that is not even a sin, it's not regarded as a sin, but if it will make another person to fall, he said, don't do it. Do you read it in your Bible? Can't go for people like us that have heart. Things that people will tell me, and things that the only ghost himself person will tell me that I will just have to in the place of prayer. Because if I go to tell the person, the person may not even have the hand to take it. One woman came to me, one woman came to me some years back. Maybe probably that's the reason why the woman cannot even come to our church. She has been in our church at one time or the other while we were in the garden. And she brought her daughter, her daughter was with us too, but something I don't know happened. This woman, <laughs> when I saw her, the Lord just downloaded some things about her. Of course, the Lord asked me to tell her this song. I told her. And she acknowledged it that it's true. I said, okay, we need to pray. We need to stop it. We prayed. And she left. She didn't come to me again for another one year. One whole year, I didn't set my eyes on this woman again. After my year, one day she has problem. She called me again. I said, I'm sorry, uh, this, this is a place, can I see you? I said, why not? Come. Now you run away now. Run away, soldier. Come back. <laughs> I'm at home waiting for you. Then she came back and she began to cry. She knelt down for me and she began to cry. I said, why are you crying? He said, I ran away because of the stuff that you said I should stop doing that. That's what I just didn't see myself stop doing it. I'm still doing it. That's why I, I, I'm ashamed of myself. And I said to her, the word that I spoke to her, clarify her mind, and made that want to look at herself as a few things. I don't like to let people think that they are, I, I, that's not my assignment. God didn't call me to come and make people feel things before me. God didn't call me to come and condemn people. Even if I meet you doing evil like this, I no, no two years a year. I will only acknowledge you. I will only talk to you. And if better still, I can go on my meal in my closet and pray for you. You are not, you don't have the capacity to condemn anybody. You don't, the Bible says for to them that are that are called, to them are justified, and to them that are justified, to them are what? He said there is therefore no condemnation. There is therefore what? So which agent are you? If you are a child of God and you are still carrying condemnation about people all around the places, which which one do you belong to? Do you belong to God or you belong to devil? Even you that are carrying people's gifts all around the places, are you only? Tell yourself now. There is something that you are doing that is wrong. If God will take you before the human being, you will be ashamed of yourself. Let's change our attitude. Let's change our lifestyle. Let's make up our mind to die with God. Let's make up our mind to move with God. Let's make up our mind to do the will of God. Let's make up our mind to fear God. Let's make up our mind to be righteous, to do the right thing at all times. Whether somebody is there or somebody is not there. Let's make up our mind to be holy. Number one, 